Hello, this is an assessment of a Beckstein Model A Grand Piano. According to the serial number here, the piano is made in 1910. Uh, it's been rather amateurishly put on, this number. The Steinway next door, that's how the serial number should be put on. Underneath Beckstein's, they always have a number on the, the cross member, um, just uh, below the soundboard. And this one is very, very clear indeed. And, and that one uh, isn't the piano serial number, but you can work out from that what the serial number should be. Now, keys are ivory. There's one chip here, but generally in quite good condition. You see those ones have been taken off and put back on. Uh, that needs redoing. Really. That's not very well done, um, but otherwise in quite good condition. Now, this is a Model A Beckstein, and uh, probably 50% of Model A Becksteins of 1910 have the same problem, which is a crack on the frame. So we're just going to see, yeah, definitely one, one there. We can see very clearly as a crack frame there. has been tried to be covered over. There's a there's crack there. Uh, if you look on uh, look at look up on the internet, Beckstein Model A crack frame, you're going to find lots of images. There some cracks a lot worse than that. Now let's have a look at the rest of the restoration of the piano. My inclination is already that the whole piano needs fully restoring again because of the crack frame and for various other reasons. So the crack frame in itself doesn't write the piano off. Um, let's have a look. Uh, the strings that's been restrung in the bass. The treble strings are original, I think. The soundboard uh, is actually in very good condition. The soundboard, uh, though the badge there, if it's, it's not masked over and it's not a new badge, so I think that's all original. If we look at the tuning lever on these tuning pins, actually they are the smallest tuning pins, so that's original tuning pins again. But here they've replaced the bass strings. You can see by the colour of the bass strings too. But they've got larger tuning pins in here as well. That means the lever doesn't fit so far down them. Place work is black ebonized. It's uh, not in particularly good condition. It's in quite poor condition, really. We often polyester over because uh, doing black French polish is, is it's a really difficult thing to, to get right. Uh, polyester, like the piano next to it, looks really special. So um, if we decide to fully redo this piano, then that's the end up at the finish like that. Frame will also look immaculate like that, and of course the soundboard too. I think it's probably what we're going to do if we take on the piano. Now the piano is a wood colour, rosewood, like this Steinway here, then we would French polish it. It has 30 coats of French polish and then it's waxed over afterwards. Here's the side of this Steinway, it's really a very special grain, so we like to bring out the grain, get the colour so it brings out the most in the grain, a nice inlay on this piano too, very special piano. Now it's got a lot of action work done, it's got uh, recovered hammers there, um, it's had new rollers here and had new felt there, and uh, some of this work's been well done, but the hammers themselves, uh, they're really cheap looking and really cheap sounding, they're not pleasant at all. Here's a new set of hammers we fitted on this Steinway, and uh, you can see the quality of the felt there, it has the undercovering, a much tighter felt, much tighter grain felt, these are Renner hammers, and uh, Renner Steinway, Stein Renner make all Steinway hammers, and uh, there's the top action, actually the bottom action too, so the whole replaced action. Normally we replace hammers, shanks and, ro and rollers and, and hinge, because then you get a nice tight hinge pin, whereas uh, if you haven't replaced that, sometimes the hinge pins vary and they're not so tight. So I think we're nearing a decision on this one that we're going to have to either not buy the piano or redo the whole piano. And we put a new rest plank in as well, because once the tuning pins get large, you, uh, you could put larger ones in, but possibly, but uh, you really need a new rest plank. And anyway, uh, a, a modern rest plank is very good for central heating. Uh, so we'll be replacing the rest plank. You can see it's got some liquid or something on it anyway. Got some nasty damage on the casework here too, but of course that all goes when we fully repolish the piano. A Beckstein Model A, by the way, is 85 keys, that goes up to top A. Compare that to this Steinway next to it, you see it goes up to top C, that's three extra keys. Really not used that much and very, very few uh, pieces of music written for that because uh, the composers are aware that a lot of people might not be able to play them. And, and in fact, in the days when the Beckstein was made, m probably 50% of pianos were 85 keys. So that's um, a Beckstein Model A in 1910, uh, coming for assessment with a view for us purchasing it. If we do, we're going to have to fully redo the whole piano. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, it just has no real tone there. We're going to have to increase the down bearing on the soundboard at that point, I think. That's the playing area that should be really singing. And even the bass strings don't sound, even though they're new. If I take this piano on, I'll, I'll make a video of it when it's finished, just so you can see the contrast. Let's have a quick play anyway.
So thank you very much for listening. The piano's now been fully restored in every detail. It's been repolished in bright polyester like a, a normal modern piano um, and it's the best quality polyester that you can get. The key tops I'm looking at now, you remember there was one chipped. That's been replaced uh, with the best possible match. When you uh, do replace key tops, you, you end up inevitably with a very slight line there you can see in the middle. Compare that to the end keys that haven't been replaced, the line's not quite so strong, but um, it's not that bad and really uh, it's a question of whether you want to replace ivories or we want to keep the ivories. So if you want to keep the ivories, you end up, you can't get a 100% match normally. Now tuning pins have been replaced, but the rest bank's been replaced, so the tuning pins now are smaller. Remember in the base that these string, we've re replaced this, now the tuning pins are smaller than they were before, and uh, these are brand new bass strings. They're German bass strings, the highest quality. They give a beautifully warm, rich sound. <laughs> tenor area again rich and warm and remember up here it was a very thin tone with the new hammers new strings and just as importantly we've recapped the bridge here so with the recap bridge you end up with a um, slightly higher down bearing which gives you a, a more, more travel sound around here and that break point especially is crucial to try and get it right so So you've got a nice singing tone there. Uh, that's the replacement of the, the, the decal, exactly the same as the last one. And then if we look at the frame, you can see how that's been refinished in Beckstein style. Remember the frame cracks at this point, there's no nothing whatsoever that you can see now. Both that strut and this one here, they, they're the ones that they usually get the crack in both of those places, but you can't see a thing now. It's been repaired and of course it's been refinished as well. Here's the other side. From our experience, there's no chance that that will re re reappear. This, that's a permanent repair. Now, it's been re the hammers are replaced with Arbel hammers, uh, Beckstein style Arbel hammers. They could either be Ren or Arbel. Really, they're, they're both so good, uh, both those two firms, both German. Um, and uh, the, the, the rollers have also been replaced and all the felts here. But you can see uh, that we haven't replaced the shanks here. Uh, that means this hinge has got to be replaced instead. It's possible to do that. Normally, we would uh, replace hammer shanks and rollers, but in this case, we've chosen not to. Uh, but the hinges are perfect and they've got to be the same as each other. So you end up with exactly the same refriction. Just going to take a look at the underside of the rest plank, so going through onto the underside here, uh, just to try and show you how you can tell it's a rest plank being replaced. It's often very difficult to tell if it's done professionally, but you can see here we've got slightly difference in height here, uh, that indicates replacement. This is a delignate rest plank, um, that's multi-layer. On delignate rest plants, you often get a slightly difference in colouring, uh, but uh, you can't really see anything on this one, but it's, a, it's definitely a new rest plank. Just to mention again that the Model A is 85 notes. That uh, does it up, up to top A. Here's an older Model V, slightly older piano. Uh, uh, this one goes up to 88 notes. This is a Beckstein again, and we love restoring this one too. There's, there's the A, two extra, three extra notes, but those really aren't used that much. So that's a full restoration of a Beckstein Model A, a six foot in long and uh, 1910. And really changing the strings and the hammers, increasing the down bearing has made so much difference to the piano. Now it sings in treble and tenor. And there's a beautiful rich bass. The Model A is such a beautiful piano. If you had a Model A, you would like it restored. Uh, we can either do it in polyester black like this. If it's a rosewood one, we, they come out beautifully. Thank you very much for listening.